Hi guys, it's Heather Darnell. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. So since summer's here and the hot temperatures accompany that, we have been so blessed to frequent the um, property pool that we have here at the townhouses that we live in. And so my son and I have been going there two, three times a week, just cooling off and enjoying our time together. Um, but while we're there, I've been noticing um, a lot of honeybees that get stuck in the swimming pool. Unfortunately, they're just looking for a place to get a sip of water, but end up drowning. And so while I've been there, I've been rescuing these honeybees and um, so happy to do that for them. But at the same time, I was all sad because I couldn't help but to reminisce back on the times that we used to be beekeepers. And oh my goodness, we're, we are not currently beekeepers um, for many reasons, but the main reason is because my son if you didn't already know this, he developed a severe honeybee allergy, so now he requires an EpiPen. So it's a little bit risky, but anyways, I do believe God will provide another opportunity for us to be beekeepers again in the future. So, but anyway, so they have been my inspiration. So out in the pool rescuing these bees, I've just really been inspired by them and wanted to do a honeybee painting. Um, only I did one last year, and so I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it this time around. Um, so if you haven't seen my video of the honeybee I did last time, or last year rather, the link is in the description for you. Um, I did it by traditional brush stroke. I tried to make it as you know realistic and 3D as possible. Um, but I also at the end of the video provide some really cool, at least I think they're super cool, mind-blowing fun facts about the life of a honeybee. So if you're kind of iffy or skeptical on them about being mean, um, or how they live or how they work or all that kind of stuff or how they get honey or how they have vision and communicate, all that kind of stuff. It would behoove you to check this video out. I really think by the end of the video and listening to all the fun facts, you will have a change of heart on them because they really are spectacular. So anyways, I thought, okay, well, I already did it that way. So maybe doing it in a pouring fashion should be the way I go. And so I thought to myself, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do something completely different. So I hope it turns out beautifully. And plus I just got some stencils for um, a late birthday gift from my parents. And I thought, absolutely, I've got to see if I can incorporate some stencil work on top of it, just to kind of combine it together and see how it turns out. But before we get started, today's ministry stack comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter six, verses 25 through 34, and it reads, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow was thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need all of them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay, this is something I'm really going to pick apart because this is a time where a lot of us are worrying and stressing out about a lot of things um, in our outside life and world right now rightfully so everything's so uncertain and just crazy and we're really just kind of you know clawing and gripping onto whatever we can right now before the next thing becomes a shortage <laughs> so anyways um i want to start with the first verse where he is talking about and this could be a long one so find a seat <laughs> Anyways, um, but I do think it's necessary because there, this really is something that I feel it is super important and the way that Jesus is talking in here could be misunderstood and or just not understood, period, the way he's trying to lay it all out for us so that it makes sense. Um, because the last thing he wants us to do is worry. There's no point in it, yet we feel like there's all the more reason to worry because of how crazy things are. So anyways, where he's talking about, and he says, therefore, I tell you, you know, don't be anxious about your life, what you eat, what you drink, what you wear. No, that really should have no concern at all. Um, 
because he's trying to put down, is your life not valuable more than those things? And then he proceeds to give an example about the birds in the air of all things. I mean, birds, you're like, okay, where, where's he going with birds? <laughs> so Jesus is, is just saying, when he mentions the birds of the air as an example, he really is just asking us to make an observation of their life. Um, they don't reap, they don't sow, they don't gather, they don't have to really do any kind of work of that nature or sorts. Uh, to ensure their survival because yet the Heavenly Father feeds them. Now that said, he's also saying since the Heavenly Father feeds them and they know it, that doesn't mean that they're going to just sit in their warm cozy nest and you know with their beak hanging open expect worms to fly in so they don't have to lift a, a I was gonna say a finger but a wing. But anyways, um, that's not how we are supposed to be and because they are not like that since they are not passive they are not dismissive they know what they have to do to go get their food because they know the heavenly father is going to provide for them they just have to go seek his provisions and so if god made the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and all the fish in the sea and all the kind of stuff and they're grand and great and everything but are we he's also asking are we not more valuable than they because last time i checked god said so himself in multiple areas um, that we were basically his crowning achievement. And one example alone is in the book of Ephesians, chapter two, verses 10, the trailing end of that Bible verse is, um, or Ephesians, excuse me, um, the trailing end of that Bible verse is, you are God's masterpiece. That means you are his best work ever. And so think about that. The thing that you have and you value and cherish the most, you're gonna take care of that the most. You're going to protect it, you're gonna provide for it, you're gonna do whatever you can. And so us being God's masterpiece, you darn better bet that he is going to take care of us. So now really think of this too. Let me just throw some more reassurance on you. If we were his crowning achievement, also take comfort in knowing that he loves us so much that also in the gospel of john chapter 3 verse 16 most of us know this bible verse that he sent his only son to die for our sins so that we wouldn't have to suffer and have an eternity in hell because he loved us too much from going there in the first place he wanted to give us that chance so that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life so that said you guys, it's very, very obvious that we are much more valuable than birds or any other thing that God created. So he is going to provide for us. So on top of the birds of the air, he's throwing down another example and telling us to look at the lilies of the field. And they too neither toil nor spin. And what he's saying in that instance is they don't worry about providing their own threads or fibers to create their own existence. God does that. So he's saying, um, yet I tell you, that said that not even King Solomon um, and all of his glory and riches can't measure up to one of these beautiful flowers. Now, if you don't know who King Solomon was, he was um, one of the kings, um, he was the son of King David and back in the Old Testament, and it was one of the kings that had um, really won God's heart over and God had blessed him tremendously. I mean, that was a very, very, very wealthy man. And so not even with his fancy pants, robes and crowns and jewels can, like I said, cannot measure up to these striking, naturally beautiful flowers that God creates for us. And again, reflect back to um, being God's masterpiece, reflect back to God loving us so much that he would send his son to die for us. So. You, we have such little faith. So he's basically, so ye with so little faith can't even realize that what God does for the birds and does for the flowers, you somehow think he's not gonna provide for you. Yet we put all of our faith in ourselves, all of our strength, wisdom, knowledge, all those things that we don't really have on our own anyways, yet we act like we do. We act like we're this you know, self-tapping system that when we are running low or basic or on empty that we could just, you know, self-tap our mind or whatever we think that we have the source to replenish ourselves well, we can't you know we only end up getting this far and then we wonder why we fell in a ditch and why we need how we need help to get out I mean it's, we are making things so complicated you know when God's trying to say you guys are really just you are really 
making this so hard needlessly when I can do all this for you. I have no limits. I spend no energy. I have no effort. You know, I don't get tired. I have everything at my fingertips ready to give to you because I love you. Yet we are so passive on that. And we instead will welcome the enemy in and he butts in and he basically infiltrates all the way down to our heart and it contaminates our thought process, getting us to manipulate the way we see God as him wanting to shortchange us or flat out forsake us um, just so we can he can keep us on that same path of being you know uh, totally worried and stressed out with and with so little faith now i believe that our current economic mess is devastating no doubt we are definitely taking a big old blow um but i've always believe that God is allowing this hot mess so that he can take something devastating and turn it into something wonderful. Because, because remember, he's always in control. He never allows anything bad to happen unless it can be used for blessings and to bring him glory. So right when people were thinking, well, why would he allow this to happen? This is just giving the hand over is just basically letting the enemy run amok when he's going, no, 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 no. He's, he's actually doing me a favor. He's doing all what you see on the outside as being horrible. And it's understandable from a very limited human mind perspective. It's, it's very understandable and reasonable for us to think that God is just basically handing the scepter over to the enemy. But, but God's really saying, no, 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 no. He's actually, he's actually serving me because watch what I'm going to make out of all this. Now, what do I mean here? when I say that, um, you know, we have too much or we're managing too much or we have things that are without of our means, a real quick side story here to put things into perspective. So if you are military, like we are military, um, and you choose to live on base, the military will basically tell you the things that you need. They will not give you anything else. There are no wants, simply needs, period. If you have two kids and you will have a three bedroom house, you'll have a room for yourselves and then one for each of your children. If you want more than what we're going to provide for you, AKA more than what you need, then you have the choice to live off of base and do as you choose on, on your own money. Um, but as far as the rules go here, this is what you will get because this is the only thing that you need. Now that is an example, they are, there are other examples within the military too. So, but God is not going to be like that. He is the gentleman. He's like, you know what? I know what you need. I have it right here. It's been here the whole time, but if you think you really need all this extra stuff, go ahead. Um, and that's when it starts to get in that slippery slope, you know, because then we have um, both spouses working and basically insisting on having careers. Both of them want to be the breadwinners. Um, and, you know, they, so all so they can afford to manage more things or these bigger houses that they think they need because, oh, I need a guest room, I need an office, I need this and everything. And trust me, I was one of those people too. Back when we lived in, um, we were stationed in Texas, I was insisting on having a guest room. Definitely came in handy for when family came, but the ratio of that room being actually used compared to the rest of the year was like, <laughs> anyways. And so, um, and like this room here, we, this was a blessing. We were really looking for a two bedroom house, just one for our, me and my husband and one for my son. This I'm telling you in one of my other um, videos late last year, I was giving my testimony on how we ended up getting a three bedroom. It wasn't on our needs. It was on our wants list and we were going to be totally fine without the things that we wanted. But if we got them, hey, blessings from the Lord. But back to when I'm talking about, you know, both spouses working just to afford all these extra things and have bigger houses and more cars or fancier cars or whatever, you also, also, you also have to look at the things that are going to suffer with that. It's not just the extra hours you put in, but you're, if you have kids, you're looking at children who are having basically a part-time family. When God meant for family to be on a full-time basis, you know, um, we have really swapped roles and I love women and our rights and our freedoms and the things that we're able to do. But we, I, sometimes I feel like we're so caught up on, you know, having these big titles and stuff that we tend to put our kids in the back burner. And instead we're going to go rely on the mother-in-law over here to be the babysitter or the nanny. And it really complicates things. And, um, and then 
I tend, it gets really hard for me to swallow when I have to hear them say how hard it is. When I'm like, oh, it's so hard for you. I don't have a mother-in-law. I can just, you know, I hardly have family around me all the time because I'm constantly moving. So again, when I feel like I have it hard, I'm actually thankful that God puts me in these situations because I have to rely on him more. I have to rely on him to show me the way for him to um, tell me that I don't need as much as I think I need because, you know, less is more. So rather you're single or you're married, God simply wants us to assess our possessions and reevaluate their worth and prioritize our love and faith in him um, because he will provide but we have to seek his provisions we we don't have to worry about you know planting seeds and reaping and sowing and harvesting and all that kind of stuff because it's always going to be there just like the birds of the air they don't have to worry about doing all of the hard work god does that for us he's the overachiever he's the door opener but we have to seek to find his provisions. Um, like I said, just like the birds, they're active, they're not dismissive, and we too are supposed to be active. Now I will say it's wild to say the least when you see all these um, now hiring signs and all these posts and all these business windows and yet nobody seems to inquire within. I really just feel like it's unfortunate that a lot of pride and greed has is basically just, um, got the best of us we have become extremely entitled and lazy and are not being active whatsoever in seeking God's provisions when he is literally just throwing them at us we want something we want major incentives in, in order for us to be active at all we want something that's going to you know be top dollar and um, have no experience, probably no work effort at all. Oh, and all the benefits under the sun, you know what I mean? And so although we, they, these are not exactly CEO positions that are posted everywhere in every business, they are a provision. They are for us to get back on our feet because once you walk in that door, God has another door and another door and another door. And when we dismiss these doors and opportunities, we sit and whine and complain and wonder why the world is against us, why God is against us, or where he is when you really need him, when your Bible's been closed the whole time and you're not understanding what's going on around you. When simply, if you opened your Bible and you read things just like this, they would make complete sense and you would understand that opportunity is around you 360 degrees, 365 days a year. Believe it or not, this is this whole portion that I'm reading to you is a segment of the Sermon on the Mount. And as we are wrapping it up, or as I'm trying to wrap it up rather, um, towards the end, so on verse 31, he says, therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Um, for the Gentiles seek those things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Now, Gentiles is a word that can be, um, it, well, technically the dictionary is just somebody that is not Jewish, but it also means because Christ was Jewish. So if you weren't Jewish, you weren't like Christ, therefore you were a Gentile. But now it really means anybody, you know, regardless of your nationality or ethnicity, if you are not a believer in following Christ, then you are a Gentile. So before I gave myself to Christ, I was a Gentile. Gentile can also be translated as the word heathen. And for me, I can't help but to laugh because that is a word my mother used to call us uh, when she would walk in and see our room a complete disaster. And I can't help but to laugh myself because I end up saying, thinking the same thing in my own head when I walk into my son's room and his Legos are just scattered all over the place. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you little heathen. <laughs> um, and so, but regardless um, of what it means, which I will post some um, definitions here for you to see, you will take note or hopefully you'll take note that you'll see that it basically comes down to somebody of no faith. And somebody of no faith is basically somebody who desires only things of this world, things of this earth, fleshly desires, tangible things, perishable things. Um, and so while Jesus is saying, hey, don't worry about what to eat, what to drink, and what to, you know, what to wear, the Gentiles worry about that, not you, because you're, you have faith, you, are of, um, you belong to me. Um, 
He's not saying, don't worry about finding food. Of course, he knows you need food. He provides for it. But what he's trying to get at is that don't put your priority in trying to, you know, uh, have a, a filet mignon every night with dinner, you know, and lobster tails and escargot for an appetizer and just some cheesecake to top it off. You know what I mean? That Those are the things that the Gentiles seek after. They are looking for the things that are over the top um, and have more priority in their life than, than they allow um, Jesus to have priority in their life. And that's where the, the ratio, the, the, the whole concept is, is out of control and he wants for us to be um, comforted knowing that we'll be provided for, but to not worry about all the things that are thrown in our face um, like on magazine covers, ads, and you know social media, all the things that the enemy wants us to get fixated on so that we are continuously distracted, we continuously drown ourselves from having little faith, um, and we are continuously just you know not mindful of the goodness of our Father who constantly provides for us and takes care of us. So seek the kingdom of heaven and you will find all that you need and then some. Because really, once you give yourself to Jesus, it's miraculous how things just start falling in your lap um, and like over and over and over again. I mean, everything just starts coming into place. You really just start finding yourself, finding um, everything to be basically sufficient and um, very fulfilling because it came from God. And knowing what when it came from God, you know that he's got your back you're lacking nothing and that's what a true relationship is and think about your own child you want your child to know that they are secure with your love you want them to lack nothing you give them everything they need and then some it's just that when we notice they start getting kind of you know a little um, entitled or naggy or unappreciative, we kind of draw the line there and we start to shake things up and threaten them like, well, you're not going to get this this week or this time, or I'm not going to give you this, you know what I mean? Because we want them to understand that what they have is sufficient. What they have is more than enough. What they have was given to them out of love. And since God is the one who loves us so much and we're, when we start to lose sight of that, then that's why I really believe he will literally just shake things up, not so that he won't provide for us, but just to realign our thoughts. Um, really understand that the word worrying is of no use, of no benefit, um, and that tomorrow has its worries on its own. So don't even go there and try to fix a time that you aren't even standing in. All right, guys, I know that was really long-winded. Again, it's something that I know a lot of us at least I feel a lot of us need to kind of soak in a little bit more because this really is a trying time for all of us. But I really wanted to also emphasize to you that you are not alone. You are loved. You are cherished. You are sought after by the Heavenly Father who wants to take care of you. So just really think about what's in your house, what's in your heart. Realign and prioritize everything and just put God first. And like I said, you will see the magic happen. So let's get started all right everyone so i have here a hexagon canvas with eight inch sides and um, my back is taped off to keep that as clean as possible but obviously we're going to focus more on the top side and i want to do a split base piece so the top color i'd like to use like a light yellow and then on the bottom um, half i'd like to use a gray so all in all i want you know B colors and tones and so I'm just gonna keep as many I'm gonna stick to as many colors um, as possible that it would kind of resemble a honeybee so I'm going to go ahead and um, make my line right here and just pour this down now this is a about a 50 50 mix of a primary yellow and titanium white i just wanted to keep this kind of more on the lighter side not necessarily pale yellow but um the primary yellow was just too bright and so was the cadmium light hue so i thought all right now let me just soften that down a little bit or bring the tint down so that is what that is and then here of course is my neutral gray number five it's probably 
want it right there. All right, I'm going to put the top back on that and go ahead and get spreading here. So, where's my line? Somewhere around here. Uh, there. Okay, I'm just drag it across and just draw it. Like so. Not bad. Okay. Now bring it down here. There. <laughs> I keep doing it. Okay, that's better. I swear. I think I'm happy now. Alrighty, so I'm gonna just drag the paint over the sides. Like that. Not really gonna worry about this too much as far as if it's cut. What is on that? Ah, I was wondering what that was. It looks like little hairs. It's still on there. Okay, hold on a second. Let me wipe that off. No little extra pieces. Okay, there. That's actually not hair. I don't know what that is. That's interesting. Okay, anyway. So let me continue here to just do a quick once over on the sides. Because once I use the blow dryer, I'm pretty sure it's going to, you know, move the, or at least move enough paint over to where it should take care of that for me. And then if I have any spots that haven't been covered very well, I can just go back and use the paint that I have here, the leftover paint. Oh my gosh, it's still on my knife. What in the world is that? Ugh. Okay. All right, better to show up now than later, right? When you can't do anything about it because your product's already dry or it's in the middle of drying and you're like, ah! I can't do anything. Okay. There's my yellow. Boom. Done. Now, I'm going to wipe this off here and then get to my gray color. Get another paper towel. Some stuff on my roll of paper towels, too. That does actually look like puppy fur. I love my Puppa Lup, but this is the one room she is not allowed in because when she sheds, you know, and just when the AC kicks on, it, her fur goes everywhere and I'm like, sorry, can't come in here. And anyways, I was in here working the other day and she looked so lonely. So I said, oh, I'll come in. Okay. And I'm probably certain where that came from, but that's okay. That's okay. You know. She just needed my attention. All right, this is gonna be a lot easier to get these covered because I can actually see these sides. <gasps> Ooh. That could have been bad. Okay, this gray is looking awfully thin here, so that might be something I might have to go back over but again that's okay I'm hoping that you know the uh, paint will just blow over and take care of that for me all right I think I got a pretty good 50 50 line going here and again let me just wipe off my knife and I think that is another little surprise that I overlooked that I need to get out of the yellow paint. Oh no, that's actually gray paint. A little streak of gray paint. Okay, we're good. Oh, all right, let's torch this. drop a little bit more yellow here. That looks super duper thin. Okay. Oh, I'll leave that. Okay. So now I'm going to drop a few colors down and 
I'm thinking I'm going to go with a um, Payne's Gray first for contrast. Let's kind of drop that down. Oops. And then for the other colors, I'm going to do some metallics. I'm going to do um, copper here. I didn't want to do brown because I just thought it's not going to clash very well, but this is kind of like a reddish brown tint to it. So I thought that would be okay. And because honeybees are not exactly just yellow and black. I mean, they're, they have a lot of neutral tones to them. So I thought this would be a good color for that. And then of course some gold. Ooh, that one spat out there. So I hope that was going to be okay. Then I want to drizzle a little cadmium yellow deep hue just for a couple of different tones of yellow. See if that looks not well. And I see that that's sinking here. So I'm not sure how that's going to look. It just means I have a few different densities of my paints here. All right, and then just for um, highlights, I think that's probably too much. Just a little bit of white, maybe a little more. Oop. Oop. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put the cap back on. These, set these aside. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and come back and add some more of the base colors just to help the paint flow a little bit better. All right, that's what I thought I felt. My cup scraped the side here as I was pouring along. These, actually this color, I'm a little concerned because this actually feels, this color feels like it's on the thicker side. So, uh, shall see some gray here get those sides okay i think i've got a good amount all right mm -hmm. cover my pieces here I have no room for accidents in this itty bitty space okay so let's move this that would be a good idea heather thank you that's why i told you <laughs> just talking to myself all right, I got these a lot more. Oh my gosh. I think now I have one of my hairs never ending. Oh, okay. Let's get that here. And then I see some bubbles I need to pop. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is, look at that. They're everywhere. It's not mine, it's the pups. And I, I say pup just because I've always called her that. Since she was a pup, she's actually a senior dog. She's going to be eight in August. My little old lady, <laughs> Rottweiler. If you haven't already know that, I'm pretty sure most of you guys do. Okay, let's get busy and torch again. Gosh, there was a lot of bubbles. Okay, now let's just cross our fingers here and hope that's the end of all of the hairs. All right, so I'm going to blow the colors together and I'm not really sure how I want to blow. <clears throat> I'm actually thinking I might want to blow them out kind of like at an angle and then that way I'll have enough room kind of in the center to put my stencil right here. Okay, let's see. I am going to stop because I see that this is really thin here, this gray. I don't like that. All right, try to mix again.
that looks like about the most awful thing ever. This is a new blow dryer for me and I just really don't think that it is doing the job and the high power on it is too much. So I'm going to do a little clean up here and let's start over. Okay. So I had cleaned it up and just poured my colors down again and I added more paint or add more paint for it to flow better. So uh, I torched it and I'm seeing air bubbles constantly rise, but my fuel is so low. So I'm just going to mix it anyways and then torch it and see how it turns out. So let's see how this goes here. And I got a different blow dryer too. So I really hope that this is going to work out. All righty. That's mixing. I have to do something else. It's not working out. Oh my goodness, guys. Just don't get frustrated. I know that some things can get in the way and you have some hiccups and bumps in the road, but it, you, you can do it. You can handle it. Um, you got this. I'm telling myself that too. So I'm going to get an extension cord. All right, let's go. <laughs> Well, it's a lot better, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, I don't see any gold. And that's what I was really hoping for to come through so it would um, match the accent piece of the honey, the queen bee, okay. Let's see here what we got going. Tell you what we got going. Five million bubbles. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm gonna touch much just because it's really kind of minimal. Um, oh man, I am bummed about that gold, but oh well, I see a little bit here. Oh, let's see if I can push a little bit. Thinking, thinking. Yeah, it's not gonna do much. Okay. That's a little better there. that. Oh. I promise I don't want to tweak this too much. This really is an, uh, like a big thinking process too. Uh, I really like how soft this is here. You know, I think I'm just going to keep it. Yeah, just keep it. <laughs> Holy Spirit's telling me you're gonna hate yourself. And he's also telling me my butane is out once again. Okay, so stand by for that while I refuel this. Again, I am so sorry for all of the um, breaks, but they are necessary to get this thing going and in a good mood. So hang on one second. 
Okay, so it is torched and I went ahead and cleaned up the sides a little bit. So I think we're good. So let me bring you down for a close up. You've got to see some of these cells going on. Really, really, really pretty. Okay, so close up time. Okay, check this out, you guys. Look at the metallics in there. Hang it when you're a little closer without touching it. Not misjudge it and ruin it. But anyways, you can see just a really nice shimmer of the metallics of the gold and the copper in there. And I'm super happy about that. It's exactly what I wanted. And the cells are absolutely beautiful. So really, really happy about that. This is really cool too. And normally a blob like this wouldn't be something that I would just leave, but because the stencil is going to go right there in the middle and cover most of that up, I, it's actually perfect. So, but let's move over here. Oh, look at that, some more. Love the cells and look how soft that is too. Really pretty. More cells. It's a really lovely balance. All right, guys, so let's see how the dried result turns out. All right, you guys, check this out. It is so beautiful. It dried wonderfully. Oh, my gosh. I actually am pleasantly surprised because there is a lot more gold in here that, that came through. I was really kind of bummed at first. Like, I expressed my concerns earlier that I didn't think that there was really any gold in there except for maybe a tidbit or two, but boy, was I wrong. And again, I am so happy that there is a lot more because it's definitely going to bring out the accent piece of my queen bee stencil. So anyways, what I'm going to use um, is this six inch queen bee stencil. Now, this is not six inches here. This is about roughly four inches from the very bottom of the leg to the very tip of the crown. Um, I'm just going to use this portion. I taped off the wreath portion because when I had placed it on here and kind of eyeballed it, I thought, you know what, this, to me, I think this wreath portion is just going to take away from my, um, the, the uh, composition on the sides here. And I don't want anything to take away from all the beautiful details. So I felt like less is more in this case, just like how this is pretty minimal as well, you know, less is more. So just kind of keep going with the flow on that concept. So what I'm gonna do is place um, my little hair, what do you know? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna place the honeybee about midpoint here, and you'll notice that unfortunately, the I won't be able to cover what I anticipated to cover originally was a lot of that copper and Payne's gray, but that's okay. Um, at least some of the honeybee will be covered well some of the honeybee will cover that um and who knows all the metallics combined and everything it just might make it look even more beautiful so alrighty, what i'm gonna do is use some of the um an iridescent rich precious gold by pebeo it's pretty well it says it's high viscosity i and eh, yeah anyway it's 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 definitely thick it's definitely not fluid uh, so, and that's, I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to apply. And I'm just going to use my little oval, um, palette knife and just kind of, you know, smear it over kind of like spreading butter. So let's go and let's see how this turns out. But I'm so nervous. It's so beautiful. I don't want to mess anything up at this point. I usually don't use stencils, but again, like I said, I just wanted something to really make this scream honeybee just not just the colors and the concept of kind of like wings here but i really wanted to actually put a queen bee right there that way there's no mistake of what kind of project this is speaking of so all right let's go ahead and start smearing it on
Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> Look at my hands. They're like totally shaking. All right, here we go. Gently lifting this up. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys. Look at that. It is so beautiful. <gasps> wow. That is awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with this. I see a little bit of a smear or a little spillover, but that is such an easy fix that's in my uh, gray portion and it's just plain neutral gray number five. So I do not have to worry about trying to replicate a custom color, you guys. Oh my gosh, I am so happy. So now all I'm gonna do is get this all covered up. I can't decide if I want to do resin or just like a high gloss um, varnish like by like Liquitex or something. So anyways, let me think about that. But until the meantime, stand by for the finished result. All right, so here's the finished product. And as you can see, I used resin, or well, I hope you could tell that I chose resin to use over the top. And for me personally, it was almost a no brainer just because using resin really, really enhances the colors of your piece, specifically the metallics, which is the whole purpose of using metallics. You really want those um, colors to come through. They are accent colors for a reason so that they are highlighted and resin really does the job for that unfortunately it's a whole other beast and a challenge to take on so if you have the time and a couple extra bucks to invest in it i think it's totally worth it um just you need to have patience just like any other project you take on but overall the best thing you could do for your best artwork so anyways guys i hope you didn't laugh too hard when i had my first little embarrassing hot mess <laughs> but I'm glad that you could see that I have you know big hiccups too and I come across problems but um, the important thing is is you can know that it's they're they're easy to overcome if you have the, the drive and the will to do so um, and it's just good to see you know it's good to have a laugh every once in a while too so all my paints and uh, supplies are listed in the description for you and if you like this video please be sure to not only share it but to also hit like and subscribe for more Liking, sharing, and subscribing also helps other people find this video, so it is much appreciated. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul. See you next time. Bye.